Welcome into K-State Online. Mason Voth, Drew Galloway here with you. And we start this week, uh, Monday, March 11th, with plenty of basketball coming up. So we'll talk about that tomorrow and throughout most of the week because there's going to be a lot going on with K-State. They're either going to play really bad or uh, well enough to win on Wednesday. And then there's probably going to be a little bit more hope and anticipation with what goes down on Selection Sunday. So plenty of basketball to come. But I know a lot of people are also probably interested to know what's going on with football. They started spring practice. And with that, it also means that they are hosting a bevy of recruits every now and then. And they had their first wave of spring visitors come around last week before they kind of shut things down for another week and everybody went on spring break. So uh, what is the latest and, and what can we tell people about what went down for K-State uh, in their hosting of some uh, impactful 2025 guys? Yeah, it was a, a pretty good uh, crop of just three 2025 visitors, but you had uh, two four-star defensive ends. So, again, the case eight, the talent level just keeps rising to the top. They keep getting a ton of talent on campus. Uh, so, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll just start there. And getting Jaden Woods back on campus is a big deal. He hadn't been on campus for a little bit. And you... He's a he's a recruit that you just don't know kind of where everything's at right now. He still has a top 13 out. Uh, I think that the next kind of step for him will be to go from a top 13 to a top five. And I think that K-State has a legitimate chance to be in that top five. Even with all the offers that he's gotten because K-State has recruited him probably the longest out of anybody. And he and when he gets to campus you can see that he really enjoys it and that there's a, a genuine connection between him and the k-state coaching staff so with Jaden woods I, I feel pretty decent though the only real kind of thing that has given me a pause is that going from a top 13 to a top five is a big cut so I, i'm interested to see who ends up making the cut for him yeah it's a top 13 is really just like a, it's less about who's in this race and more about who's not in it. When you, yeah. when you see something like that, uh, I, there's not much significance to being the team that makes it in there. But if you're outside of it, you're like, Oh gosh, well, what, do, what did we do wrong? What's wrong with us? So that, I mean, the K-State is in it. And like you said, they, they've been in it for, uh, the the longest period of time, so that's going to buy him some sway, uh, and, and obviously being close, like there's a there's an element to that which helps uh, because I, I think recruiting it can go one of two ways, and I don't think either one is wrong. You can have the kid that at the end of the day decides, you know, uh, I'm okay with staying fairly close to where I'm from, and then you have the other side of it that goes, this is my opportunity to kind of get out of here, and for some people you know, two hours away is not enough and you need a little bit more. And it can be appealing that if you have the opportunity uh, to make it pretty easy to go somewhere else, then that's something you can do. So I think that's something that this is for all recruits, not just like the Jaden Woods recruitment, but I think this gets lost a lot because yes. whenever, you know, Chris Klein has done a fantastic job of making sure that the Kansas kids they want for the most part come to K state. And I think that's impressive because I think that a lot of these guys, like when they're, especially the highly recruited ones, it would be pretty easy for them to go, you know, I'm ready to kind of get out of the Kansas bubble that I've been in my whole life. And I get to go do it at this awesome football program that wants me. So I think that's something that should just be kept in mind because as much as me or the person listening to this, that's like, well, I was from the state of Kansas and I was cool with going to school two hours away. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Some of us are like that. Some aren't. And then the some that aren't also sometimes happen to be really talented athletes that have, you know, Michigan and Alabama hitting up their phone, uh, which, you know, if you were in that position, you might think a little bit differently about it. I don't know. Yeah. Another thing for Woods, too, is like it, it's big for K-State to be his first visit of the spring. Because, I, I mean, I think of that shows pretty genuine interest in itself right there. But he has a huge spring lined up. With, I think he is visiting 10 schools. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll come back to Woods more during the summer. 
for after the spring when he announces his top five. Uh, then second is another on three industry rated four star defensive end, Dayton Hopkins. Uh, he's actually somebody that we didn't catch that he was visiting until afterwards. But this is a recruitment that's been kind of done in the shadows a little bit. But after talking to him and speaking with uh, people on staff and with Hopkins himself, there is a real genuine interest between uh, both sides there, too. Uh, unlike Woods, there's kind of three schools that are at the front of Hopkins' recruitment, and he's not afraid to really admit that, uh, where it's going to be K-State, Missouri, Iowa State. So it's going to be a local battle. And this was the second time at K-State, and he seems to really enjoy it. And him and Buddy Wyatt have kind of developed a really nice relationship and have done it, for the, for the most part, kind of in the shadows without anybody really noticing because when he visited for a football game, it kind of went under the radar. When he was offered, it kind of went under the radar. And uh, he's another Missouri kid, and we, we've seen K State kind of increase their presence in Missouri. And now this cycle, they have Dylan Duff, and they're also going after Lucas Allgaier pretty hard and Jason King pretty hard, both from uh, Missouri as well. So we're seeing K State kind of flex their muscles a little bit in Missouri and. Getting Dayton Hopkins would be another huge recruiting win, and beating out Missouri for two Missouri kids would be really impressive this cycle. Yeah, so with the the Hopkins recruitment, I mean, if people go and and look right now at his at his profile on on three, you you would see, like you said, hey, there's there's three pretty clear cut teams that are in the mix for him there, uh, and obviously, the, if you look, it skews pretty heavy right now. To, to Missouri, I mean, how much stock would you put into the way that is ordered right now? I know it's early, and I know that there's a lot to sort out, but uh, is is that the order of priority that you think those teams would be in, or do you feel like K-State's in better standing than third place in what seems like a three-team race? I think that every team right now is pretty even. The, the skew to Missouri right now is that he actually has an official visit scheduled to Missouri, but he's working on scheduling an official to K-State and Iowa State as well. So you, you get those scheduled, I think it'll end up being pretty even in the algorithm. So it, it's going to be a pretty tight race, but I, I would say that Missouri is probably the leader, but I, I think that it's really close between all three. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know that. And again, this is kind of a highlight. I mean, these are not the only highly rated guys that are going to be yeah. making stops in Manhattan this spring. Uh, but it starts with some some top guys, and then you're going to end it with some top guys later on throughout, and it'll be interesting to see where that all goes. Uh, there's one other visitor over the over the past week. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Anthony Cade Agumoro, I think I'm saying that correctly, <laughs> uh, is another offensive lineman coming through Manhattan, and we saw it last year with Connor Riley and really flexing his muscles and kind of coming into his own on the recruiting trail where he's getting a bunch of highly rated guys to come to Manhattan and is getting a lot of top or top rated guys. And Agumoro is just another one in the, in the line, uh, not rated by on three yet, but I believe that uh, rivals has him close to a four star and they're the only ones that have rated him so far. So another highly touted offensive lineman came in, um, Oklahoma is a place where K-State has kind of been lost in the shuffle a little bit under Chris Kleiman, but now with Matt Wells and Brian LaPac, you're seeing Oklahoma being a little bit more of a place where K-State wants to dip back into another tackle prospect, which is a, a big time thing for K-State because you've seen that they've been really, really good at interior guys that can play tackle. The, and Agumoro is probably a tackle that can play on the in, in, in the interior if you need him to. So that that's a pretty big thing in its own. Agumoro also has a bunch of visits lined up for the spring. So we're really good to see where K-State is for him. But it, it says something that he wanted to visit K-State without an offer and then ends up getting offered. And they're already in his top four or five schools right now with uh, Tennessee, Oklahoma State, and NC State. 
Uh, I know that he also has an official visit to North Carolina that's on, on the docket, which is, again, why the algorithm is pretty skewed for North Carolina right now. But it, it is interesting, though, that he mentions NC State and his top schools, but North Carolina's visit or the <laughs> official visit that he has scheduled. So I wonder if North Carolina is really kind of running in the back and if that visit even ends up taking place. Well, he saw him in the Pop-Tarts Bowl and decided, why would I want to go there? Maybe I want to go to Kansas State instead. Uh, it, it's, it, it is kind of interesting to, to hear you say that. And I think that's another good thing. I mean, we talk about like when you, you wonder what's wrong, why can't you get these local guys? Well, again, you know, there's there's some circumstances there on why local guys would not want to stay local. Uh, the same thing is is kind of something to, to remind people about with the RPM on On3. Right now, like you're saying, some – Official visits are set with hard dates, and so that's going to skew that. So, like, don't take the RPM as the gospel right now on some of these guys on uh, and where they're leaning. Do a little bit deeper digging. Maybe add the the click and check the prediction. See if anybody's put one in. I was going to say, uh, unless there, unless there's a prediction <laughs> put in, that that's when you really kind of take the stock into where everything is. Because the other thing is too is like. Not every site has everything updated, so the RPM can look a little wonky sometimes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's finish things up here with hitting on something that he's going to visit later in the spring. It hasn't happened yet, but I know in a lot of people's eyes, he's probably number one in in trying to to snag in twenty twenty five. Is there anything new that people should know about Lincoln Cure? Um, honestly, not really a ton to really know or to keep in mind just that his visits not until april so got plenty of time there i still really like where k-state sits for him uh, i think that it would be still kind of a surprise to me if he wasn't to end up at k-state at some point i know that he just had state basketball where i believe goodling ended up getting second uh, if they didn't win, then yes, they got second. I knew they were playing in the championship game, but I, I did not, uh, yeah, I'll be honest. I think, you know, in past years, I think I would have been able to be like, yeah, I know this team and this team won the state championship in basketball this year. I, I think I was so caught up with uh, worrying about K state and Iowa state that I just, I, I could not tell you all that much of anything. I know Cape and one here in Wichita and I know Wichita Heights lost, but I could not tell yeah. you anything outside of that. Now, here we go. Goodland uh, lost to Wellsville. No, uh, we'll, we'll so he, screw those guys. So he still had a really good basketball season. And now that basketball is over, I think you're going to see him, at least for a little bit, kind of just enjoy not, not really doing anything up until track season starts. And then after he gets going with track, I think that's when you'll see him take visits. He still has a k-state official visit locked in and it's the only official visit he has scheduled right now so i, I would just be surprised if he doesn't end up at k-state okay all right well that's probably good uh good for people to hear so more on lincoln cure coming down the road once he actually makes it to manhattan for a visit this year but uh finishing up a, a busy time for him and getting ready to start another busy one uh because what you said w when uh like track and field starts up for him i'm pretty sure practices for all the spring sports are already underway so it's probably from one to another for him uh yeah he probably he, he probably gets this week for spring break and then it's, yeah it's a track now yep go be fast okay uh <laughs> all right. yeah i mean that's that's what you tell guys <laughs> i don't know what else to don't know what else to tell you I, I, there's one time, uh, and this is getting away from the stuff people care about. So you can shut it off now. If you, if you want, we got into a, a discussion during one of my classes in high school and we had a kid that, uh, he was on the cross country team and he was talking about how I think he was trying to make the case that like cross country, uh, was like, he could go out on the golf course and play golf right now, but I would not be able to go out and like be on like run cross country at that point. And I said, so I was like, well, actually like there's some actual skill involved in like hitting a golf ball and like doing that. I said, you're right. You would end up way faster than me in cross country, but I can guarantee you like I could do everything you do in cross country. You would just do it a little, I would just do it a little slower, but like, <laughs> 
I could finish the race and I could move my legs. Uh, I'm, I was like, I'm not so confident that you could go out there and like swing a golf club and hit the ball where it needs to go and do all these other things. Like I said, you just got to go out there and be fast. Like that's everybody can walk and run. It's just a matter of some people are faster at it than others. Now, cross country is a little bit more impressive than just being fast because that, has, cross that has to do with like your stamina and everything else and being able to sustain. So I'll give him that. Like that has that, that's probably a little bit more work there. But I was just like, eh, I don't know. Everybody can do this. It's just some can do it at a much better level. I think if you've never swung a golf club before and I gave you 10 swings, you're hitting that ball further than 20 yards maybe once. So uh, that just uh, made me think of that when I said go be fast because that's really what it is, especially for like you get into some of these high schools. Like if you have the guy that is just superior to everybody, I think you're really just telling him go be fast or go throw it far if uh, he also has the strength to go with it. And then you've got a guy that's doing like 20 events at every track meet. I, I will say that Lincoln is a very, very good hurdler. That uh, I I would not be confident in my ability to tell you that I could go out and jump over hurdles consistently. No, I'm hitting the hurdle first try and probably the tenth try. I well, I, you know, I've always wondered like you don't get penalized for like going through them. Like why just <laughs> not? Why not just like get it down pat on how to truck those things or <laughs> like perfect it to where you you jump and you step on the top part and it goes down and just keep going. Uh, I, think there, I think there's got to be a way to cheat the system that nobody's figured out yet with hurdles. If you perfect that the next four years, you can be at the LA Olympics. All right. Well, I'm going to get on that. We're going <laughs> to figure out how to cheat the, the hurdle system or just find somebody that is really fast and can get really small and like duck down under them or something. <laughs> I, I find some way to, to beat the system. Cause I've always thought that I was like, you should be like out or like have to stop in your tracks and then wait and then go. If you hit, like there should be a penalty for it. Not just, well, your penalty is you probably tripped yourself. So <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's one of those things that growing up, I always thought like, Oh, that's a disastrous mistake. If you saw a hurdler plow through one, now you're like, no, nah, not really. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whatsoever. So that's, that's all I got. Uh, any, anything off of recruiting or anything else you need to get off, your chest before we get out of here uh more visits will start to happen and be more free flowing after spring break because they want uh these kids to come and watch k-state practice because that's a big deal during the spring so it's gonna be probably a more tame week of recruiting this week than at least last week was all right well we'll see uh how it all plays out for k-state but loads of them coming and if you're wanting to see who is going to be uh, on the schedule and making their stops in Manhattan in the near near future, head over to kstateonline.com. You can go over to our uh, foundation, the premium message boards we have, and become a member. You get all the inside scoop. Drew has a, a nice little thread there for you so you can see, okay, this guy is in on this date, and then that way you can immediately hound Drew and DY and say, yo, heard there were visitors yesterday. What's the deets? Uh, they will have them for you. And that sounded really stupid of me to say. That's not how I normally talk. So I don't think I've ever said deets in my life before. But I think I was making fun of people uh, that that will say that, not using my own lexicon. Uh, so we better end this one because I probably offended the track and field and cross-country community. And uh, certainly the hurdlers out there are like, you don't know what you're talking about. And now uh, our, our loyal subscribers are like, don't put me in the crowd that says deets and demands them from Drew and D-Wise. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. We are out of here. We'll be back again tomorrow. We will have a preview of the K-State and Texas game at the Big 12 tournament. We'll get D.Y.'s thoughts on the Big 12 tourney as well since uh, he was not a part of the discussion on the Sunday show, which go back and watch that if you haven't. We talked K-State's win over Iowa State. Also, we preview the Big 12 tournament and discuss the realistic NCAA tournament chances for K-State. So we're out of here. Thanks for watching K-State Online.